Okay, today we're looking at the Elizabethan theater. We're going to be trying to understand why the theater was actually the most popular form of entertainment uh, in the Elizabethan era. And starting off, we do need to look at the differences between the theater, uh, which we can see on the left, and the cinema uh, on the right. And judging by the two images, uh, it's quite obvious that the theater is going to be live uh, with live actors, while the cinema, we're going to have pre-recorded film. So if you're thinking in terms of High Wycombe, we're going to think the Swan Theater. Uh, we're going to think about for the cinema, Cineworld or Empire. Before theaters actually existed, uh, the most common way to be entertained about 500 years ago would be having a band of wandering players stop in your town to put on a play. Uh, they usually be in groups of about 10 to 15, and what they would do was bring a portable stage uh, into a courtyard or set it up at an inn, which is sort of like a pub, and they would put on a quick play, you would then donate any kind of food or money that you had for them, and they would pack up and go on to the next town. Now, these bands of uh, wandering players were regarded as, as a positive, but also a bit of a negative in Elizabethan society. They brought more than just plays with them. Uh, they brought news, and one of the very common routes that these wandering bands would take would be coming from the north down towards the south in London. So they would go through places like Princess Risborough, uh, Saunderton, and High Wycombe. And when they traveled through these small villages, they would bring news of what was happening in other places. Most people in the Elizabethan era, they were born in their village, they lived in their village, and they died in their village. And they seldom had the, the time or the money to be able to leave. So these wandering players brought news with them. They also brought disease. Because they were moving around so often, they could spread diseases quite quickly from one village to the next. So they did have that positive and that negative uh, outlook among themselves. Now, the theatres were built because the inns and courtyards, they just couldn't hold the sheer volume of people who were watching the plays. Uh, historians are pretty famous at naming things terribly. So if we think back to the first time the whole world went to war, they called that the First World War. If we think of a time where there was a war in Vietnam, they'll call that the Vietnam War. And naming the theatre was no different. Uh, the first theatre built in London was called the Theatre. And it was really, really successful despite the Puritan opposition. And Puritans are just that. They're people who are very religiously pure. Uh, they did very little other than go to church, pray, uh, and really not participate in anything fun like the theater or dancing or uh, holidays. Now, the government was quite worried about maintaining law and order. So they actually forced most theaters to be built outside of the city walls in London. And if you do go to London now, uh, and you go to around where Victoria Station is, or you go into Leicester Square, those were originally outside of the original city walls. And this did mean that those theatres have actually stayed in that region for about the last 400 years. Actors in the theatre productions were all-male casts. Uh, the roles of women were actually played by young boys or young men, and they would wear dresses uh, and have a lot of makeup on to look as feminine as possible. But these actors were more than just actors. They were really skilled at singing, at dancing, uh, playing musical instruments, uh, and a lot of them had tumbling or acrobatic experience as well. So going back to what we talked about in our last lesson, uh, the Elizabethan theatre was extremely popular and extremely high-tech for the time. So again, if we have our two theatres, so we have one that's shaped a round circle and one that is rectangular. Uh, again, if we have our stage towards the back of each, The reason why these theaters were round was simply to enable sound waves to bounce off of all the walls uh, so everyone could hear. And we do know that if you were to have a rectangular or a square theater and you were to speak, uh, your sound wave would just bounce right back at you and people in the back corner uh, would be left not being able to hear as well. Remember, this is before electricity, before any kind of speakers or amplifiers, so everything had to be built with acoustics in mind. 
On the next slide, you can go ahead and pause the video for a few moments, and on a piece of paper or in your books, can you just make a sketch of what an Elizabethan theatre would look like? We'll go through all the components and what they're labeled as, and then your job will be to recreate that. It's so here we have a theater. We'll start off towards the very top. Uh, and there's a reason why there is no roof over top of the stage. And again, as we covered in our last lesson, it's simply because there was no electric lighting and you needed to have natural sunlight illuminating the inside the stage. Now moving over here, we have a flag. And this was really important because unless a flag was raised, people wouldn't know what play was going on. So you would hear the sound of a trumpet, oftentimes from this little tower here, uh, and a flag would be lifted to signify a play is about ready to start. Looking at our stage, we can see there are two pillars on either side. These were made of wood, but they were carved and painted to look like marble. Uh, and the top of the stage uh, has a canopy, and this signified heaven. There were trapdoors in top, and you could actually lower things from the heavens. The stage itself down here, this is going to be representative of Earth, because this is where the actors will spend their time. And there's a trapdoor just behind the man on stage, and this signifies hell. Uh, this was an escape route for actors during specific scenes, but also objects could be lifted from the bottom of the stage up to the top. We also discussed in our last lesson the groundlings, and that's this space right here. Uh, this was the most affordable space to watch a play from, but again, if it were to rain, you're not protected, unlike in the upper galleries. And it's in this area here that you would have very expensive seats uh, in the first, second, and third uh, floors, but this was because you were covered from the elements and the acoustics were quite good. And just a reminder, the circular shape of the theater is simply uh, in place for good acoustics. So feel free to pause the video now, make a quick sketch in your books, and hit play when you're finished. Okay, so what were Elizabethan plays all about? Uh, plays were much the same as the cinema today. We like to go and watch things that interest us, so whether it be fighting crime, relationships, or comedy. Uh, 500 years ago, people had the same sort of idea as us. They wanted to watch things that interested them. One of the plays that you're probably very familiar with is by this man here, William Shakespeare. Uh, the play was Romeo and Juliet. So we have uh, two people from opposite families who try to come together and it ends up in a tragedy. We've got Ben Jonson. Uh, he wrote The Silent Woman. This is a comedy play. Uh, essentially, it's about a, a man who has a trick played on him uh, and he ends up marrying another man dressed and disguised as a woman. And the running joke within that play is the man who's pretending to be a woman does not speak. And lastly is Christopher Marlowe's The Tragical History of Dr. Faustus. And we'll remember Christopher Marlowe by that amazing haircut that he has. Uh, this is a play about a, a German professor. He's a really well-educated guy. Uh, and he decides, because he knows everything there is to know in the world, he's going to learn about magic and witchcraft, something that was illegal uh, in the Elizabethan era. So this is one about the impact of committing crime. Now, not all plays were actually acceptable, as we alluded to previously. And Christopher Marlowe, he was often on the, the cutting edge of what was okay and what was not. But there was another play that wasn't allowed, and that was the play called Robin Hood. Now, Robin Hood really shared a dangerous message. It told people that if you're poor and you don't have enough stuff, uh, you can go ahead and steal it from someone who is rich and has enough stuff, and you can share it amongst your poor friends. So when we think back to our last lesson, we did discuss how most people in the Elizabethan era were quite poor. Uh, they lived in a very cold home. They were angry, and they knew how to use weapons. So something that monarchs were very aware of is making sure that plays did not encourage these people to commit any crimes. Looking at the opinions of the theatre, we're going to try to figure out is the theatre good or is the theatre bad? So if you'd like to pause the video now, have a look over the nine different factors, and when you've had a chance to read them, you need to decide is it a reason why the theatre is good or a reason why the theater is bad. 
So having a look at our first point, uh, it says the government can use a play as propaganda to promote their beliefs, such as making Spain look bad. Uh, Queen Elizabeth had a lot of influence over what plays were about, and she could have her playwrights write these plays to influence public opinion. Crime increased when plays went on. This meant that theatres had to be built outside of the city walls for safety. And this was a, a direct law issue by the mayor of London at the time. He didn't want any kind of uprisings to be happening within the city, so he instructed them to be built outside the city walls. On the same topic, there was a fear that young people might group around the theatres uh, and cause fights or pickpocket and try to steal from theatre goers. There were scenes of drunkenness and rude language. Everyone wanted to see the latest play because they had very little free time to actually have fun. Some people did think without plays, people would be tempted into the very negative uh, things in life, such as drinking and gambling. So plays were a, a very positive distraction. Many people could show off how wealthy they were by wearing expensive clothing and jewelry to the plays. The Puritans, and that reminder, they are very pure religiously. Uh, they called them the nests of the devil. Puritans believe that you should spend your time at church and not going and watching a play. And lastly, the queen loved most plays as she saw them as an opportunity to spread her ideas and her values, and as we already looked at, use them as an element of propaganda. So now that we're finished, if you could please go on to show my homework and complete the quiz. Uh, and this quiz is listed, uh, the quiz is listed as uh, the Elizabethan Theatre.